is Tracy with the Limelight Pet Project and today we are at the NOAA Center in Stanwood with Jen and you have been with the NOAA Center for a few months now. Just a few months. And you help people find their perfect pet. It's our joy. Yes. So who do we have for adoption here today? We have Miss Papaya and Miss Papaya came to us from Hawaii. So she's a, a recent, um, recent transplant. So she came from Hawaii. Could you explain how you've been telling us how she's a little bit different from most of the dogs that people would meet in Washington State? Sure, so she came from Hawaii, one of our transfer dogs, and they're living um, more wandering in the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Someone may feed them, they may sleep on somebody's porch, but they're not used to being inside pet dogs the way we are. And many things that we take for granted from our pets that they're gonna already know, like a leash or a collar, mm -hmm. or even how a door opens, mm -hmm. may all be new to them. Right. So while they are smart and inquisitive, and in many times very resilient, they're cautious. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a lot to learn. And that can be a little bit of a challenge, but it can also be a joy. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly been a joy watching her blossom here. Yeah, so she came in with a group of three other dogs correct and yes. they've all been adopted yep um, what do you think is making it just a little bit harder for her to find a home she's the most typical I think she wants to go take a sniff she's the most typical Hawaii dog of the group I'm gonna let her go ahead and take a sniff and let her have a chance to be a dog a little bit so she's the most sensitive of them she startles very quickly mm -hmm. she's a little reserved upon first meeting you and like you said she's not allowed she's not mm -hmm. gonna greet everybody She's not gonna be visiting um, on the first interaction and feel comfortable. So it's that sensitivity and that lack of knowledge about how to be a normal dog. Mm -hmm. But she's an amazing dog, she's just herself. I really liked the way that you described her though, that she's also an optimistic dog. Very. So even though it takes her a little bit longer to warm up, even though she, she does act a little bit differently from what people might first expect a dog to act like, she really wants to have that connection. I was watching her lean into you and look at your face while you were talking and really want to have that engagement. So do you picture her doing that in, in her home? Very much so. Um, she's going to be the sort of dog who's going to be attentive to what's going on. I think as she gains confidence, she's going to go and check things out more on her own. Mm -hmm. But she's going to be one who really likes to be in contact. We've been working with a number of our volunteers who are doing special enrichment with these special needs dogs. They're spending times sitting in the kennel, mm -hmm. doing simple games with the dogs, just boosting their confidence and letting them know they're in a safe place so that they can make those choices and really start going out mm -hmm. and meeting their adopters a little more confidently, which I think is gonna be the key to getting her home. Now, what are some of her favorite things to do? <laughs> I know that she likes to be with a person. She does, and she likes to be in physical contact, so mm -hmm. she loves nice, slow pets. She likes to curl up against Aww. you. I think she's a little chilly. Uh, our weather's not quite what it was in Hawaii. No. She really loves soft toys, too, and she's willing to make almost anything a toy if you let her. <laughs> but the little soft toys, she pushes them around, and she kind of talks to them when she's playing with them. Haven't seen a lot of interest in uh, tennis balls, but those soft toys she really mm -hmm. enjoys. And she certainly loves exploring. Aww. So she'd be a really great exploring buddy. She loves to follow her nose. She's very sensitive to her surroundings. Mm -hmm. Now, she's sensitive to her surroundings. How is she with other animals? We haven't uh, known of any interactions with cats. Mm -hmm. She seems interested in other dogs, and we're told she got along with other similar aged and sized dogs mm -hmm. before she came to be with us. Mm -hmm. And then how do you think she would do in a home that had uh, smaller children? I suspect school age and up would be mm -hmm. fine. Smaller kids might be a little startling for her, but she may settle in just fine and really show that confidence that a lot of these village dogs have once mm -hmm. she knows where she belongs. Hi, now, sweetie. Papaya is a pretty young dog. You're guessing she's probably about 18 months old? Yeah, something around those, probably something under two years. And then what kind of dog do you think she is? She's <laughs> well, got a very unique look. She sure does, this beautiful brindle coat. Um, we were thinking maybe Greyhound Boxer, but I think we're starting to joke that she's a, a teacup Great Dane. Oh, what a sweetheart. And one thing that you were mentioning when we first met her, uh, she's very much a different dog inside versus outside. Yes. And, and once she's outside, she seems to really blossom. So somebody that was interested in her, they would need to keep that in mind just to give her that time that she needs. And the ability to make the choice to be whether she wants to be inside or outside, mm -hmm. that's been really important to her as well. 
she be losing? Yep, she's following her nose. She's seeing yeah. that hound dog. Now, how do you think she would describe her perfect day? Um, I think it would probably start with snuggling with her person. Mm -hmm. Coming from Hawaii, I think she might like to be tucked into bed with you even, but even a nice big dog bed to curl up, probably in the same room at least with you. She enjoys, uh, she's a social eater, so she enjoys eating when you're eating. I've talked mm -hmm. her into having some string cheese with me. Aww. Hi, girlfriend. She'd Hi, love honey. a nice long sniff. She likes to follow her nose, maybe play with some good toys. I think she'd like to be with her person most of the time if she could, but these nice long legs, um, she could really cover some miles on the trails too. You can see her nose go in there. She's got all sorts of things to smell. Yeah. Traffic might be a little uh, challenging for mm -hmm. her, so a quieter neighborhood would be a good thing for her. But again, I think she'd love some time on the trails with her person too. Mm -hmm. And one thing that uh, a potential adopter would need to keep in mind is to not let her off leash for a while, just because she is acclimating from Hawaii from a life where she was basically a community dog. She didn't have one set home. So for her safety, just to keep her on a leash. Sure, and we've got her on that long line for this reason too. I'm pretty sure she'll come back to me if I invite her, but I wouldn't want her to startle and get mm -hmm. frightened. I would never reach for a dog like this because that might scare her more. Mm -hmm. So this long line lets her have the freedom of this whole space to explore physically, to smell, to listen. Hi, girlfriend! To check doing? things out, but I could get her back if I needed to, if she startled. Mm -hmm. Good girlie! And that's one thing that you were talking about too, is how you like to incorporate choice for them. So at, at the NOAA Center, they have kennels where there's an indoor and outdoor space. Do you think that that would be something that would be really helpful for her in her home? I think it really would. Uh, being aware that she is used to having those freedoms Aww. and she's more likely to choose to be with you if she's allowed to be away. Mm -hmm. um, hi girlfriend and that's Look something again girl. that we work on here at the NOAA Center whether it's you know feeding them out of some puzzle feeders giving them some scent enrichment mm -hmm. making sure they have pleasurable in kennel time not yeah. just out on the trails because no matter how nice we make it they're still going to spend a lot of time inside mm -hmm. and we want them to be comfortable there and know that good things happen there too. Aww. And she loves Holly. <laughs> oh. Helping! <laughs> what a sweetheart. <laughs> She'd be an excellent helper. It really yes. shows us who she's going to be once right. she's home yeah. instead of who she is here with us. Mm -hmm. And it's been an honor to get to know her and help her on her journey. So if somebody sees this segment, they think that they have the perfect home for her. How do they reach out to the NOAA Center? What's your website and your email address? Sure, they can visit us online at thenoacenter.org. All of our adoptable pets, Papaya and the other cats and dogs are all uh, up there. Pretty pictures of them, a little bit of information, sometimes even a video or two. Mm -hmm. And if you want to reach out directly to me, I'm at dogcare at thenoacenter.org. And I'd be glad to fill you in on more information about Papaya or any of the other adoptable dogs here at the NOAA Center. Wonderful. And then what are your, what are your protocols during COVID? Sure. Well, we've reopened to the public, mm -hmm. so we're still following social distancing and asking people to be masked, but there's no more appointment necessary. Come on in. We're welcoming the public to come in and visit with our cats and dogs visually. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to physically interact with the cats or the dogs, we ask you to have a conversation with our matchmakers, see if you both think it's a good match, and then we can do an introduction. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Jen. Thank and you. And Papaya, who is definitely enjoying spending some time next to Holly and we've enjoyed our time up here at the NOAA Center in Stanwood. This has been Tracy with the Limelight Pet Project, and we shine the light on harder to adopt pets because their stories are worth telling.